So, should I say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen? Let's imagine, 10,000 years ago, a certain city completely vanished from this planet. It was a rich city with a perfect layout, full of natural resources, precious materials, built on concentric cycles, equipped with an ingenious system of waterways. The creators of Atlantis apparently did everything right. They respected nature, and they made the best out of it, with refined architecture and a perfect infrastructure. Unfortunately, Atlantis sunk somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. So let's start our journey, not into the past, but into the future. Let's find out what defines the cities of tomorrow. The city is the backbone of our society, and we have to keep it healthy. Of course, more clean air, less noise, more space, fewer traffic jams, and above all, more quality of life. Three questions will help us to draw a blueprint of the new Atlantis. How can we integrate everything into the city? How can we keep nature alive? And what impact will artificial intelligence have on urban living? The city is the heartbeat of our society. Take a current example from the United Kingdom. 50% of the country's entire economic output comes from its capital, its London. How can we integrate everything in mega or maybe in giga cities, buildings and streets, hospitals and airports, cars and trains, events that attract many people, even individuals will wear beacons that send data. Integration means aggregation of this data. So the first task is to connect the dots in the Internet of Things and Services. This is the only way to master the complexity of our everyday life and the only way to achieve the optimum for all inhabitants. And what I find most exciting, 75% of the urban infrastructure for the year 2050 has not yet been built. That is an enormous opportunity to shape it smart. Maybe the founders of Atlantis did it exactly like this. They chose an empty island and started from the scratch. Here is an example, establishing a real-time connection between a car and the next traffic control center. If you know in advance when a traffic light will turn green or red, you will definitely drive in a much more relaxed and in a much more efficient manner. Or take parking spaces. One third of traffic in inner cities consists of vehicles whose drivers are looking for somewhere to park. We can elim eliminate this in parking garages, sensors will report on empty parking spaces. At the side of the road, cars, cameras will recognize free areas. These gaps will be registered in a digital map service where we work together with here. If we just knew in advance when a currently occupied space would become empty, parking would no longer be the big problem. But how? The smart city requires a new understanding of the so-called data sharing. Nowadays, most people already reveal a lot about themselves in the social networks. So there is a certain readiness to share as a principle of give and take. In our third Audi Urban Future Award back in 2014, we searched for the best approach worldwide to cope with city traffic. And actually, Mexico City demonstrated how anonymized mobility data allows reliable forecasts in the short term about possible bottlenecks on the streets and in the long term about future infrastructure requirements. The Mexicans compare donating data with donating blood for the benefit of the society. And this project became the winner of our award. And what? I found in my talks with the city planners or even with architects is we will need a new model for cooperation between key stakeholders 
the society, businessmen, and politics. And this is where data will play an important role. In its pavilion downstairs, the Here Map service is showing the amount of data it feeds into the navigation system of our new Audi A8. Here is now creating the first real-time reality index of the world, because a geographical point can be allocated to all objects in the Internet of Things. The index will consist of many layers, the weather, the traffic situation, new roads, new buildings, and so on. Integrating everything in the city is for sure the key, because with this kind of big data management, the city will become predictable. The second question for Atlantis Reloaded is, how can we keep the nature alive? As far as mobility is concerned, all means of transportation must go for zero emission. And the energy for them and for the entire city will have to be generated with net zero emissions. Only by pursuing this goal in the long term, true sustainable mobility can be really achieved. And next year, we will launch the Audi e-tron, our fully electric SUV with a range of 500 kilometers. And for the next eight years, until 2025, we have an impressive total of more than 20 electrified cars in our pipeline, battery electric cars as well as plug-in hybrids. At the same time, we are researching into innovative fuels. We create them without using fossil energy sources. For the production of the Audi e-gas, we utilize surplus wind energy and we actually take CO2 out of the air. Powered with this e-gas, our Citron models emit at least 80% less CO2 than a comparable gasoline-powered car. And you see, sustainable mobility has many dimensions. Now, the third issue, which will shape our cities in the next decade. For me, this is the most disruptive development of our days. We talk about artificial intelligence. This has the potential to radically change our lives. It will become so powerful that we won't do without it anymore. For the automobile of the future, this means three things. And they all have something to do with autonomy. Soon, if you want it to, your car will drive all by itself on city highways. We founded a startup for self-driving systems the Autonomous Intelligent Driving. At this motor show, you can see a concept car, the Audi Icon. The name indicates this concept is full of AI, artificial intelligence. It will master not only city traffic, but all kinds of traffic situations. Only then you can talk about level five of autonomous driving. And this might significantly reduce the number of accidents. And this takes me to the next aspect of autonomy. People spend nearly an hour a day behind the steering wheel. When an Audi drives by itself, that means more freedom, more autonomy for its user. So every day, you gain the 25th hour, as we call it. Not because the car takes you faster from A to B, but because you make time spent driving into time used in a more meaningful way, either with quality time for your loved ones or with productive time to get things done or with downtime in which you just relax. You will be supported in this new freedom on individual mobility, and that's the third aspect of autonomy. In the future, we are talking about the personal intelligent assist. A car will be more than a means of transport. Take the Audi icon. It thinks with you and acts independently. Because it knows you and your individual preferences, 
and it keeps learning. That's the essence of our Audi AI technology promise. And tomorrow, an Audi will be your personal cocoon, a place of refuge that makes life easier. You see how our designers imagine this future. So we are working on integrated mobility solutions for the whole world. And let me give you some examples. In Hong Kong, we are testing Audi at home in an exclusive residential complex. A fleet of Audi models is available and can be booked using an app. A concierge takes care of washing and refueling. In Somerville, a suburb of Boston, Massachusetts, we are using a fleet of cars to test piloted parking. When no drivers have to get in and out of a car, parking garages will require significantly less space. This gives real estate developers a new degree of freedom in planning. Or take this one. At many major airports across the United States, you can arrange to pick up an Audi A4 from our subsidiary Silver Car, booked with an app, started with an app, according to the motto, no hassle, no lines, and no paperwork. Ladies and gentlemen, and now let's think one step further, the third dimension. And I admit, 10 years ago, I used to think it was a crazy fantasy, flying cars. But our subsidiary in Italy design is now really working with Airbus on an interesting concept called pop-up. That's first of all a car, a self-driving car with an electric drivetrain. Its all glass capsule can accommodate two passengers. The onboard computer calculates all possible routes, including through the air when there is a traffic jam on the ground. In such a case, a large drone picks the capsule up and in the meantime, the road module drives to the next charging station. Of course, the pop-up also flies all by itself. This modular concept with a capsule, road module, and drone isn't made for ownership, but for an on-demand service, as people like it. We created a startup-like workspace between Ital Design, our subsidiary, and the Airbus company, for this exciting research project. Talking about ownership versus car sharing, I was very pleased to read a recent IBM study from Ben Stanley. He's the next speaker. He says 86% of the people still want to own a car, so I should be happy. Good for us. Anyway, the blueprint for the future is made of interdisciplinary ideas from various sectors. Let's pursue this goal together, to live and to work and to remain mobile in the city more attractively than ever. And one major difference to the old Atlantis will be the city of the future is not a lonely decision of one single person. It is all of us who shape the next Atlantis, a smart city where we accomplish a fantastic goal together, the integration of everything. So thanks a lot for listening.